Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of the Brand Builder Show. Today's show is going to be all about Amazon PPC pay-per-click advertising. You must master this stuff if you want to win as an Amazon seller in 2023 and beyond. And to talk about it, we have got uh, one of the, uh, the, the the great minds in the space. I was going to call you a guru then, but that's that's not really a good thing anymore. Is it? It's a bit of a negative. So yeah. uh, Mina Elias, hopefully I'll pronounce your name right there. Uh, welcome to Perfect. the show today. Thank you for having me, man. I'm very excited. Definitely not a guru. I, I uh, <laughs> live, live and breathe the, you know, Amazon advertising and, and uh, you know, we spend right now we're spending like $3 million a month, which is insane uh, on, on Amazon. So we're getting a ton of data and, and we're doing it profitably, obviously not just spending for the sake of spending. Um, so I'm like a heavy practitioner and I'm not one of those guys that built the agency and now other people do the work. Like I'm in there every single day, like how can we be 1% better? That's one of our core values, 1% better every day. So I'm like, how can we be a little bit better with the ads? How can we be a little bit more efficient? And so it's kept me as, you know, I, I want to stay as a practitioner forever because I feel like the second that I, you know, step back, I, I might be worried about like us keeping uh, up with Amazon and innovation and stuff like that. Yeah, I love it, man. Because it's changing so much, right? And that's what we'll, we'll kind of get into and talk through how Amazon PPC is different now to how it may have been 12 months ago. And I think a lot of people can um, fall into the trap of doing it the same way they've always done it when the market is you know, really changing. So we'll definitely get into that. And I'd love to hear about a bit about the, um, you know, the journey of the agency as well. It's obviously the topic is going to be Amazon PPC, but I suppose that would be a, a good intro because you've done your story on loads of different podcasts. You've probably been on hundreds of different podcasts by now i see you everywhere um but so to give maybe a little bit of a different spin talk us to us about the agency uh because that kind of establishes your credibility of course um what uh what made you kind of get that started uh trivium right the, the agency yeah yeah so very good question i started with mma nutrition which is the supplement brand and and in uh the end of 2020 early 2021 um an aggregator reached out to me they said uh you know we've heard you on so many podcasts uh, uh we're looking for someone who can train our in-house team we're building like a team we don't want to rely on agencies we need someone who can train them to be you know really good at amazon advertising i said cool i, I can do it here's a proposal here's everything that we can cover here's samples of all of my work and then they uh, are like, okay, can you run one of our brands um, just to prove that you know what you're doing? I ran one of their brands. It was me and, and you know one employee. And uh, I was doing strategy. He was doing execution. Uh, and and uh, you know four months later, they're like, you know, we have six other agencies that we've brought on. And you have, you've brought the biggest improvement and returns for us uh, on our brands. Uh, let's move forward. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, Man, I have a massive Amazon personal brand. I have beat the best uh, that uh, and and a uh, an aggregator that's raised 200 300 million dollars. I you know can hire anyone and and they they you know I've beat the best. And I I enjoy doing this. I enjoy I enjoy like problem solving. I enjoy that whole aspect of Amazon advertising and and constantly like figuring things out and adapt. It's very, it's it aligns with what I want to do. And at the end of the day I'm not married to selling supplements or I'm not married to, uh, you know, whatever I, as long as it brings me freedom, freedom, uh, financially, freedom of location and time I'm building, I'm helping people. I'm, I'm adding value to the, you know, in, in exchange, making money. Um, let's do it. Why not? And that's how the agency started. So I started there and, and obviously there was a massive demand of people wanting me to run their ads and I always turned them down. I said, no, 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 I, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm just a brand. I want to have a hundred million dollar supplement brand. <clears throat> that never obviously ended up panning out. I still have MMA Nutrition. It does about twenty twenty five thousand a month in profits, uh, you know, pretty passively. But um, you know, besides that, I'm like, okay, I don't think starting a company called MMA Nutrition in when I was whatever uh, twenty six or you know, and, and I didn't know anything about business. Uh, that's that's not going to be my home run. And uh, I was just lucky that it actually ended up working and making me uh, you know pretty good salary. But um, besides that, I don't think it's going to be a hundred million dollar company. And I, I hit that fork in the road and I'm like, you know what? I actually, you know, people want me to do this. No one's asking me, Mina, when, you know, I need more, you know, hydrolyte. I'm, I'm going to die without it. But people are like, uh, my, my friend would literally call me and be like, please, like, what do you need me to do? How much? I said, no, I don't, I don't want to do it. I, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to deal with clients. 
And, and I was having these conversations all the time. Like every time someone would see me, man, I loved everything that you shared on this podcast. You gave me so much value. Uh, like if you ever have an agency, let me know. I'll be the first client, all of this stuff. And I'm like, okay, I would be stupid to keep saying no forever. Uh, you know, especially because I should, you know, it's business. You should never be married to a product, never be married to a business, never be married to anything. It's at the end of the goal, uh, at the end of the day, I know what my goals are. My goals are, are, it doesn't matter how I get there. My goals are like, you know, to live a good life, provide for my family, um, you know, have freedom, all of this stuff. And, and it has nothing to do with what I do. I could, I could literally restart everything in the hospital industry. I could go start an engineering firm and, and re, you know, restart everything. It, it doesn't matter as long as I'm able to work whenever I want, demonstrate a lot of value, add people, uh, add value to people, help them so I can get money, money, you know, back. Um, do whatever I want. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. So yeah. that's how the agency started. And then, you know, as soon as I started announcing that I have an agency, it was just people, you know, one after the next, after the next, after the next. And, and um, the way that I did it was a little bit different. So uh, I, I know how traditional agencies built their teams, but I had my team built for MMA nutrition. And I said, okay, I know the key players. I know I need a senior strategist who, who understands the strategy behind, you know, long term. And then I need someone who's in the day to day advertising, literally like living, breathing bid optimization and launching campaigns and all of this stuff. He's living in the numbers. And I know I needed a brand manager for all the miscellaneous bull- that had, is for Amazon. And then I know I needed an analyst because it's, it's um, you know, it's below their pay grade when you're the ads manager and you're the strategist to constantly collect data and all of this stuff and, and present it in a nice way. It's like it's a, it's a lower hourly task yeah. than, than living and trying to recognize patterns and tracking organic rank and all this stuff. So I built that team and I said, OK, cool. Um, how, how many brands do I think can can this team handle? And we started adding one brand at a time. And I would say, you know, how are you guys doing? How are you doing on capacity? We added one brand and then the next and then the next. And we, we kept, you know, interviewing these brands and saying, what better? What can we do better? What more can we do? How can we be better? How can I serve you better? Oh, organic rank. Perfect. Let's start tracking organic rank. Oh, market tracker. Perfect. Let's start tracking your market. Um, you know, I, I would like this. Can you merge my listings? Can you do this? Can you do that? And we just kept stacking the, the needs and the wants of, of these brands. And I'm like, okay, cool. Now I have a team that is serving brands in an incredible way. The strategy has always been there. The, like we can strategize, right? But, it, but it's like, how can we strategize and also serve you really, really well? And, and uh, then we, we ended up with you know, something that's, that's very, very valuable, which is a team that, that's incredibly efficient, um, not managing too many brands. I think we average four or five brands per team. Um, and then, you know, from there, it's like best analytics that we can give out, best reporting, best over communicating, all of this stuff. We ended up with a great service. And then from there, it was just a matter of, you know, let's, let's, uh, you know, find the, the, who's the, the people that we add the most value to. And, you know, it's kind of the people who are doing, you know, 10,000 a month in profit or more, uh, because then our price point is not, doesn't hurt their bank too much. And we know that in a couple of months we can, uh, coop our cost, and then it's bonus growth, growth, growth. So, um, you know, ones that we found, okay, they have a good conversion rate. They just, they don't understand their traffic. There's a lot of inefficiency in their PPC. And so we dialed that in and it's like, okay, find more of those people, bring them in, continue to improve the service and continue that feedback loop of how can we be better? How can we be better? How can we, I think this is the thing that I do more aggressively than anyone I've ever seen. Uh, every time I have a conversation with anyone, I'm like, can you tell me one thing that I, I can mean a personally be better at? Not, not like the, the company, but just me personally. And I've just taken that to the agency. I'm like, if you, if you guys are not every single day asking for feedback, uh, how can we be better? How can we be better in every single aspect? Yeah. We're, we're falling short because, you know, at the end of the day, you're just trying to serve someone in, to the best of your abilities and just asking the question daily, you can constantly iterate. And, and uh, that's yeah, yeah. now we do over, we have a, over a hundred, I think we have 104, 105 brands under management and um, close to 60 people. And uh, yeah, it's, that's started, you know, from mid, mid 2021 and it's now early 2023. So it's been a fast growth, but you know, mm. we're, it's crazy. I had the personal brand. I had the personal brand to support it. Uh, I had the knowledge. It's, it's just it came down to a matter of uh, making sure the quality doesn't go down as we grow. Because that's the number one thing that I'm worried about is, you know, are, are we going to grow too fast? And then things are going to start slipping through the cracks. And I, I don't want that to happen. 
Definitely, yeah. I mean, so much to unpack for me there. I think the um, how you scale an agency without it, um, you know, the quality of what you do is is a whole nother, it's like a whole podcast episode in itself. But um, in terms of like breaking down the PPC side of things, I suppose my first question to you that first came up is when you're talking about how you outperformed agencies for the aggregator. uh, The first question, of course, is is how? Like, what, What did you do that was different to what top level agencies were doing? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Um, we are very, very, very in the details, and um, I, like the other agencies use software. Uh, you know, they do all this stuff. We live inside of the data in Excel. We don't. We don't rely on any software. We don't need a software to to iterate. We don't. And and we understand. Um, we everyone in the company has first principle thinking. Uh, I I put this controversial post up on, uh, and I I, I want to ask you this question too. Can you prove? That the PPC sales you see in Campaign Manager are accurate, not 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 attribution delay or any. Can you prove that it's accurate? Mm-hmm. How can you prove that that number that you see it, yesterday it says that you made a thousand dollars in sales in mm-hmm. PPC sales? Can you prove that that number is accurate? Uh, I, I mean, I guess you can't. Thinking about it, no, you I can't. Mean, no, you just trust it. Exactly. So you can't. Now, guess who figured this out years ago? Facebook marketers. Facebook marketers would run a, run an ad campaign on Facebook. Facebook would say that, you know, they, they this one got $1,000 in sales. This one got $1,000 in sales. And they go on the Shopify and they only got $1,500 in sales. And they're like, hmm, okay. So who's lying? You know what I mean? And they yeah. understood that there is an attribution issue, so they started doing things differently. They started saying, okay, this one is reporting, this one is reporting, let's cut down and let's see what happens to our total Shopify sales. So they're like, okay, this one, you know, this one's doing this, this one's doing this, let's cut $100 from here, what happens? Uh, okay, we went from 1500 to 1400 let's cut this one. Went from 1500 to 1200 okay, okay, okay. This is, let, let's bring that one up, you know, let, and, and they started doing these things. And they're like, okay, and then there's obviously software like Triple Whale and all these other software that help you do that. But they figured that out. And then I'm like, I'm seeing all of these discrepancies in, in, the, in the patterns. And I'm like, okay, uh, I have you know these campaigns. I'm spending a little bit less money. Uh, it's weird how the PPC sales, like, you know, if you look at the PPC sales, it looks like this, very scrambled. Uh, I, I lower the, the, you know, this, they, they go down, up, down, uh, you know, I increase, they go down. It doesn't make any sense. Let's look at total sales. And so ignore PPC sales. You increase spend, sales go up. You decrease, sales go down. You're like, okay, cool. What's, what's the explanation? There's something wrong in the middle. There's, there's a lack of correct attribution. So the data must not be accurate. Okay. And because we know that the data is not accurate. Now I went to my team. I said, Everything that we do is iterative and everything that we do has to tie back to, to three core numbers, your ad spend, your revenue, and your profit. Everything else doesn't matter. Your ecos, tacos, this, that, obviously conversion rate and click through rate are all good indicators, but what's the true stuff? The true, true, true stuff is your PPC spend, you're getting charged, you know, yeah. from your revenue. Your revenue is real revenue, uh, and if you run the date range report, that that ends up with like, okay, this is how much money is being transferred to your bank account, and then your profit is the only number that really matters because that's how much money you're gonna keep in the bank. And so, you know, people are like, what? I always get this question in in like a client uh, interview or like a you know when we're having a sales call, they're like, what what tacos do you shoot for? I'm like. What, what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> what, you know, like what, what body fat percent, uh, what, what weight? It's just, it's so like, are we talking about someone who's like really big or really small? And so they're like, what tacos do you, do you shoot for? I'm like, I don't know. If I increase the tacos, maybe the profit goes up. If I decrease the tacos, maybe the profit goes down. So who cares about the tacos, right? They're like, yeah, actually, mm-hmm. if you did lower the tacos and the profit went down, I wouldn't want that. So I'm like, so why do I care about tacos? I care about profit. That's the, the important one. And so yeah. once everyone understood that, I'm like, okay, now everything else that we do, yes, we do have some indicators. Like what is a keyword that's spending money and not making sales? Uh, this keyword. But when you're going to add it as a negative, keep an eye out on, on uh, total sales. And if you start adding a bunch of negatives and you notice the total sales drops and those are all negative keywords that's spending money and not making sales, then something's up then maybe they're actually doing something, but we don't know. But because the total sales dropped, they shouldn't. If, if you have keywords that are spending money, not making sales, you, you negative them, 
you should spend less money and make the same sales. They weren't contributing. So now that the team understood that, that's how we started outperforming people. That, that was the first part is mm -hmm. we stopped looking at, at the wrong things and the in-between things. And we looked at the, the end, the ends like PPC spend I can control. Uh, uh, you know, sessions, I don't know. Se uh, maybe sessions is accurate. Maybe it's inaccurate. It's a good indication of things that are happening, but, I, but I'm not basing a lot of real decisions on it. Mm. You know, if my PPC spend goes up and I notice my impressions are going up, okay, that's, that's something that, I, I mean, it's a total number of impressions. Uh, what's happening to my revenue? Is that, is that going up? If that's going up, cool. If impressions are going up, revenue is not going up, I try and, and figure out what's happening. Am I increasing bids on things that are not actually driving sales or, or what, what's going on there. So yeah. as long as I'm looking at those main numbers that are actually, you know, true, like when you boil everything down to the bottom, that's the true number. Um, that's number one. Number two, our analytics really uh, became much more advanced than, than other people's. Um, I mean, we get uh, people that, that are coming from other brands, uh, other agencies all the time. Right? And th this is even when I was consulting, right? I was just helping people. They pay me an hourly and, and I would talk to them. And then they're like, here, this is what the, this agency sent me. And they would send them like PP, sponsored product uh, cost, uh, sponsored display, sponsored brand, ACOS, TACOS, PPC sales, total sales. And I'm like, this is this data, number one, being one summary does not help because if yeah. i don't know what the trend is how can i make a decision is this getting better or getting worse right so mm -hmm. you just sending me that or you sending me you know uh, like a month over month without any sort of like you know let me show you some some trends that doesn't help me that's number one number two there's so many uh, metrics in the middle that are missing so we weren't looking at sessions, which is the number of people coming into the listing. We weren't looking at the cost of traffic, which is the cost per session. As I increase my, my um, ad spend, I'm, I'm getting more people into the listing. What's the cost of every single person coming in? Uh, conversion rate and click-through rate were often left out. Cost per click was highlighted. I'm like, who cares what the cost of the click is? You care about making money. The cost of the click is is one in a million things that affect how much money you're making, right? Because the cost per click can be super high. If your conversion rate is high, who cares? If your conversion rate is 55%, spend $3 a click. <laughs> yeah. And every two clicks, you're making money. It's a, a printing machine, a money printing machine. But but if your cost per click is $1.50 and your conversion rate is 3%, good luck. You know, you're, you're going to need $30 to make a sale. No one was talking about the, the you know, cost of acquisition, blended cost mm. of acquisition. Mm. How is that changing? And then another thing that, that I realized I was doing uh, that maybe others weren't is people were, were optimizing and launching. They were doing all these different things. And, and um, you know, after a while, I started, you know, when I was trying to do a lot of like pattern recognition, you know, the spend would go from like 4000 to 4500 a week. And uh, I would go to my team and I say, what did, did you do? They're like, well, we launched five new campaigns uh, and then we added some negatives and then we lowered the bids here and then we increased the bids here. I'm like, you guys just went in, in four different directions or, or at least two opposing directions. What, what's the goal here? Are we trying to scale or are we trying to optimize? Like, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to make more money or less money or, you know, make more revenue or make more, pro like which one? They're like, well, you know, I, I guess the, 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 the main thing is they're trying to scale revenue. I'm like, okay. Don't do anything other than increase, increase bids, increase budgets, launch new campaigns, increase bid by placement. And, and let's keep sponsored brand and video and all this stuff. We'll talk about it in a second. You know, let's yeah. keep it on the side. But let's do the increase stuff. Okay, cool. We only do these actions. The 4,000 becomes 5,000. Sessions go up. Revenue goes up. Okay, great. We moved in the right direction. Good action. Do it again. And, and let me know if we can keep tolerating that loss and profit. Because obviously, as you launch new stuff... You, you know, some of it doesn't work. That that's a profit hit. Cool. Now we're moving in one direction. Okay, guys, we're st I'm starting to see a little bit diminishing returns. Let's not do any more in this way. Let's do all back to optimizing. Um, you know, lowering bids, adding negatives. If the bid by placement didn't work, drop it back down. Um, if you see some keywords with high sponsored rank, high organic rank. Try cutting down the sponsored rank a little bit. See if organic rank gets affected. If it doesn't, great. We may, maybe we saved some money. Maybe it shows up in the top of page one and the bottom of page one, uh, and and uh, it's different people that are seeing the, the 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 two listings instead of 
the same people, you know, that could be clicking on the sponsored, even though they could have clicked on the organic. And then we do those actions. We notice spend goes down, uh, sessions go down, sales go down a little bit less, and then profits go up. And I'm like, okay, cool. I just figured something out. If we're going to, you know, take action to, to scale or optimize, keep everything in the same direction now, per product. Per product that obviously you can have one product that's in a launch phase you're blowing it up another one that's very mature and you're trying to optimize each product is is its own individual person uh own individual identity treat it however you would treat it but each one should have a very clear goal what the next few weeks look like instead of just scale optimize scale optimize all at the same time and uh you know that's kind of at least just on the performance side the communication all this stuff is a whole separate thing but mm. You know, that's kind of how we started outperforming people is we started living in the details. We started having this first principle thinking of questioning everything and saying, is this true? Is this not true? Can you prove it? Can you prove it to me? And then anyone that you ask, can you prove that these PPC sales are accurate? I have this whole thing going on LinkedIn. No one can actually prove it. And I, I know I'm right because I'm like, there is no proof. There is no proof. There is no, you, on, uh, the, the only thing that you can do is you can start with a product from zero, launch uh, ads and then you control every single sale and see if the attribution is correct. But obviously it's impossible at scale to, to do that. So it's like, you can never, you can never make it, prove it. You can never prove that the numbers that they're telling you in that's recorded as PPC sales and PPC sales also affect organic sales. So not only do PPC, does PPC spend and sales affect organic sales, but also we don't even know if this is attributing all the right things, or it could be that yeah, it, yeah. more of it should be organic or more of it should be sponsored. That is just, there's a gap. And, 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 mm. uh, and, and it's, you know, as a result, it's like, okay, cool. If we go down to first principle thinking, we have really good analytics. We take one direction at a time. We ended up really doing a good job. And, and um, the other part of it also is that everyone on my team is is like a, a, a business brand builder. Like they they are not looking at ads only. Like my my mm. my ads guy, he's like, hey, did you know? Just wanted to let you know, one of your products is now twenty eight days of stock remaining. I've noticed that as your stock went down, your sales have also gone down. With all things uh, been the same, this could be a co contributing factor. You know, most marketers or that are just focused on advertising aren't going to start looking at things like that. They're like, mm. I know, you know, I, I just ran an ana analysis on your competitors and it seems like your click through rate has been going down over time. And they are all talking about this value proposition in their images and, and you aren't, mm. you know, this, there's, this could be something. So now they, that they have like this entire holistic approach to it's not, it's a funnel. Okay. We're launching campaigns. We're getting more impressions, more people seeing us at the top. A certain number of those people convert into clicks and sessions, uh, and that's your click-through rate. So what are the factors that affect the, th the click-through rate? Your main image, your price, uh, you know, your, your uh, star rating and your reviews, your title, uh, badges, coupons, lightning deals, and if you're a prime FBA, you know, prime FBA or, or FBM, how's the speed of your shipping. Those are the factors that affect it. So how's your click-through rate doing and, and what from those factors can you improve can you improve like is it the main image uh did everyone's prices slowly go down and you weren't paying attention that's why we do market tracker because we want to know uh, how's everyone what's everyone else doing you know all of a sudden they start seeing that four or five competitors drop their prices over time guys i just want to br bring up something if we're pr if we're priced at thirty five dollars and everyone else is at twenty nine ninety nine this is going to be an issue so don't tell me why is our echoes higher why is our ppc worse Tell me why is our conversion rate on our click through worse? Because you know we're the only ones with a higher price. It used to be that we were decently priced or low priced. So th they look into that now. Again, impressions turn into clicks and sessions, click through rate, that, and then the sessions turn into sales. That's your conversion rate. So all of these are factors that also are affecting your advertising because it's the same people coming into the listing, um, you know, and we're trying our best to improve the the cost of those people coming to the listing, you know, through efficiency of ads. But if your conversion rate goes from 10% to 20%, your ACOS just halved, hypothetically, mm -hmm. right? If, if it was a reporting true, your ACOS would half. Um, but we know it's not.
So uh, <laughs> your Ecos just have to, and your tacos just have to, because you know, your cost of your advertising for the exact same hundred dollars you're spending to bring people into the listing, instead of doing 500 in sales, you're now doing a thousand because double, double the amount is converting. Yeah. So they understand that they, they break it down and they understand all the deficiencies. And they're also looking at that metric. Um, when, when it's like, Hey, you know, what, what's going on guys? Why is our uh, ROAS uh, going down total ROAS or why is our profits going down? Well, it seems like our cost of traffic is the same. It was 85 cents. It's now, you know, 86 cents, not a big change, but your conversion rate went from 18% to 12%. What mm -hmm. happened? Here's a competitive analysis. Can you, can you figure out why the competitors, you know, why is this happening? Did the competitors change? Did something happen? Um, you know, or thanks to market tracker, are we still gaining market share? But the, the but the the seasonality is a little bit down. Everyone's experiencing this, except a few of maybe the big uh, branded ones that are that are doing also external marketing, like for example, like Yankee Candle or Liquid IV or Ultima or whatever. Those big brands yeah. that you know are, are are less resistant to seasonality because of their mm. holistic like omni omni channel presence. And I mean, this is, that's kind of that's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference between yeah. good good PPC and really good PPC. Yeah. And I think you allude to a change in the market and I don't want to you know, obviously answer it for you, but what you're talking about here are things that the Amazon seller of two, three years ago didn't even consider. You know, you run your auto campaign, you harvest your keywords and put them in a manual campaign and that was kind of it. But, you know, this is marketing, right? You're talking about it from actually building a brand, building a business. Uh, you know, most Amazon sellers don't even know what uh, customer acquisition costs are. Like, what does that even mean, right? But you, these terms you're using, this is like the the new way an Amazon seller has to think, right? The the world of Amazon PPC is changing. Um, speak more to that. Like over the last twelve months, how how have things changed in the industry? How do sellers need to be flexible and prepare for the next twelve, twenty four, thirty six months? Yeah, very good question. Um, I've been blessed that I invested sixty thousand uh, dollars in trying to make my brand work off of Amazon. <laughs> I hired this incredible guy, Clifton. Uh, his name's Clifton, incredible marketer, and he's the one that opened my eyes to the fact that uh, he's like, "Listen, man, like here's the different things. Right, we need to launch." different uh, videos on Facebook. We have the creative, we have the headline, we have the call to action. Those are all factors. Once the people come into the listing, we have the landing pages. I'm going to split this different landing pages. And then it got me thinking, I'm like, dude, like that's how it works. It works is yeah. who's the audience that's seeing you? What are they seeing? What, you know, how are they, you know, clicking? Are they, are they enticed or not? And then once they're in there, you know, he would move the reviews up, move them down, do all these different things. And then we would split test, which is the best landing page. And so that's what opened my eyes. And, and then I realized if you are now on Amazon and you're trying to, to dominate and win, it's no longer PPC. And then you have a listing. It's, mm. it's continuous improvement on both. The goal of PPC is to drive as much traffic to your listing as cheap as possible. That's, that's the goal. How can I bring the maximum amount of people to the listing? There's two things. Number one, you're going to be as efficient as possible with your PPC, which is, um, you know, look, look at look at all of your campaigns, look at the campaign structure, make sure that there's nothing being wasted. So if you have a campaign with 25 keywords and you see that there's 18 of those 25 are barely getting any sales, what's the point of keeping them in there? Pause them, put them in a new campaign, you know, one campaign, one ad group to keep the budget flowing smoothly. Um, a maximum of five keywords is what I found works better. Um, your budget has to be at least a hundred dollars a day. You can start with a lower bid so you don't spend the full hundred and work your way up. But if I see, uh, you know, $25, $30 budget a day, you're being, uh, you know, th throttled. Amazon's saying, okay, you have $30, dollar cost per click. You can get clicked on 30 times. So I'm going to see, I'm going to show you only a thousand times, and it'd be, you know, because I don't want you to waste your entire budget so quickly. As you grow your budget and you and you keep your bid low, you're showing up to the maximum available people, but at a certain position. It's a, maybe a lower position. And as you work your way up, you, you know you're seeing, you're gathering the data, you're saying, okay, at this position, you know I'm doing well. Um, Atomic is a phenomenal uh, tool for that because it can show you over time uh, the different bid changes, your different ecoses, which I don't think is, a, but they also show you the different sponsored rank positions, and so. It, it, all in one place in atomic you, so you can say okay cool when i had this bid i was in this position and i converted the best uh and, and then you can you know you can basically like start making decisions that way but yeah. 
th that's how you're, you're going to be efficient with your ads is good campaign structure, constantly testing uh, different keywords and different product targets. Whatever works, double down. Whatever doesn't work. So, you know, going to, into the search term report, identifying keywords that are being clicked on and spending money with no sales, adding them as negatives. Or if the ACOS is incredibly high, uh, add as negative or lower the bid if it's an exact or a product targeting campaign. But if it's auto broad or phrase or expanded ASIN, you can't really, you know, just lower the bid because it'll lower the bid for everything. Some could be performing well, others not. So just add negative to the stuff that's not doing well. And and that's being efficient with your ads. You're, you know, you're trying to capture as many people as possible by launching as many keywords as possible and being efficient. But also the second part is how can you increase your organic ranking? Uh, you can do ranking campaigns, single keyword campaigns, broad phrase, exact, spend a ton of money, track your organic rank, your organic rank goes up. Now you have a, a listing that's organically placed high and is generating traffic for you, bringing people into the listing for free. So that also is part of how can we drive as many people to the, to the listing as cheap as possible. That's the first part of ads. And then the second part is, you know, based on our, our listing in the, in the search results, how can we get more people who are, it's the same impressions. We have the same 100,000 impressions a day. How can we get more people to, to come into the listing? Go, go to PicFu, uh, go to Product Pinion and, st and put your competitors, put yourself and start getting information as to why uh, people are, are not going to, we just did this with a celery powder. Um, I think it's called Paradise Naturals. And she sent me her product. I'm like, listen, like, let me be straight up with you. Your bottle looks ugly. It looks fat and, and short. I, I don't even know that this is celery. Let's do this. Make the bottle bigger. Like, so it looks, it's more of a square size In grow it. So it covers the entire white space, make lighter green, delicious celery, even though it's completely different uh, in real life. It's shorter and dark green. It doesn't matter. It's a 3d render and make celery powder and vegan mm. and organic yeah. super big she did that and all of a sudden to double the click-through rate for the exact same wow. marketing efforts we had we doubled the amount of people coming to the listing and at wow, the same yeah. conversion rate uh, the conversion rate improved too you know we couldn't really control that right uh, to, to that level because the conversion rate was also dependent on the main image yeah. and this was one example she's now doing it with her other product which is a bone broth uh, a collagen bone broth so going to pick food product opinion Figure out why people are clicking on your competition, not you. Is it the price? Is it the reviews? Is it the main image? Is it the title? Your title is, is all keyword stuffed and ugly and I can't understand it. Try and fix that one thing at a time. Fix it. Do another poll. Do another poll. Validate. Then try it on Amazon. And that's continuously improving your click-through rate. And then do the exact same thing with the conversion rate. Go, go and figure out what are all the other things like the rest of the images, the video, the A plus content, questions on your listing, the other videos that people are, you know, Amazon posts, virtual bundles, uh, coupons, discounts, price testing, all of those factors and obviously reviews will affect your conversion rate. Constantly have a plan to improve that. That's how Amazon marketing works in, in 2023 and, and beyond because now you understand it's a simple funnel, traffic and conversions. You're trying to attract as many eyeballs as possible. And, you know, it's a bodybuilding show in, in the search results. Everyone's standing next to each other and you're like, me, pick me, I'm the best one. And then you pick on that, that one and then you go into the listing and you're like, okay, cool. In the listing, the people are trying to disqualify you. What, what can I find about your product that does it, it doesn't work for me? Let's, let's disqualify this product. And so if you can eliminate the disqualifications, if you can send, uh, sell your product through the images, if you have good reviews, good price, all of this stuff, and obviously, you know, test that stuff through data. Um, and again, the main metric there, you know, one thing at a time, keep your, your ad spend the same, uh, you know, change your price and look at your profits. What happened to your profits? If your profits went up, you're good. You know, that's good. Keep the new price. If your profits went down because you know, you uh, increased your price, conversion rate went down, but it went down too much, then, you know, fix it back, bring it back. But if you're increasing your ad spend and you're lowering your price or increasing your price, you don't know what's causing what. So one factor at a time, be a scientist, do something that's called a controlled experiment, go look up a controlled experiment, change <laughs> one factor at a time. And, and um, you know, that that's what, what I anticipate in, you know, 2023. It's only getting more sophisticated now. Here's one thing that I want to tell people to, to be uh, aware of going into 2023 and 2024. Amazon is releasing more and more and more things, sponsored video, all of this stuff, um, you know, custom uh, headline search ads, custom, custom images, um, all of the nice little analytics and all of this stuff. Let me tell you something that I discovered. We tested uh, uh, a main image 
on Manage My Experiments, which does an A-B test for your main image. And it said that my new image failed, even though a thousand people on, on PicFu said that it won. I mm -hmm. took that main image. I said, I don't believe you. And I ran it. And the conversion rate and click-through rate improved in, in real life. So be very careful of the data that Amazon's providing you. That's number one. They're giving you more and more stuff. But again, first principle thinking, can you prove to me that this data is accurate? And I know, I know you can't when it's managed my experiments. You can't. Uh, who, who knows? Maybe they just put the numbers there, right? Um, Amazon's a glitchy system. We're all getting screwed every day because of the glitches. And then number two is as Amazon gets more sophisticated, don't fall into the shiny object syndrome. Sponsored brand, sponsored video. I've noticed that when I launch sponsored video, uh, I spend $100 on, on a day on the videos. Uh, it shows a 6X ROAS, $600 in sales. I look at my total sales and they are not changed. I'm like, how did I just spend 100 more? And, and video says that it makes 600 more, but I look at my total sales and they're unaffected. And day after day after day, I'm like, something's not adding up. I kill the, the video. Again, I just saved hundred dollars a day in ad spend with no effect affecting at all the, the total sales. And I realized, and, and this is something that me and Elizabeth Green are going to have a conversation about uh, on a podcast, which is, uh, you know, like, uh, the, like the video, like, uh, you know, we've, we, all of these tools were given by Amazon. You launch them does not mean that they're always worth it. Now, when do I use sponsored video, sponsored brand, all of this stuff, when you're protecting your brand name, use everything, you know, but, but, on, but otherwise, if you're going to launch a video on a keyword, launch the video, look at the, the increase in ad spend and look at the total sales increase. If you spent a hundred dollars more, uh, you know, on ad spend and, and after launching the video and keeping everything the same, your total sales went up by $400. That's a four X ROAS. That's good. If it went up by a hundred dollars, it's a one X ROAS, probably not that good. And then, you know, people say, well, video for brand awareness, all this stuff. That's cool. If you're a brand awareness person, you know, but 99% of my brands that we manage, they can't afford brand awareness. They, they need, you know, return on ads. Yeah. It's crazy the amount of new placements that Amazon's bringing in, but it doesn't seem to be getting any cheaper. The costs still go up even with all these new placements. So it's interesting, you know, that you say about the the level of reporting and the accuracy of it. When you um, you talk about videos, obviously brand defensive videos on your own uh, sort of brand branded terms. Uh, outside of that, I know you're saying people should test it themselves, but in your experience, sponsored brand video is that something that you tend to avoid now or? No, um, we, we use sponsored brand video where our sponsored product ads and our organic ranking is low. We'll test, okay. uh, we'll test putting an, a video there and it could have, a, uh, could have better results. So that's where, where we, we uh, still use sponsored video. But, uh, and, and no, and, and there's a lot of other brands where we've launched video and it works very effectively because maybe that mm -hmm. like product market, when they see the video, they're like, they immediately bite. But um, yeah. That the, you're only going to figure that out when you launch, you keep everything the same, launch the video, look at the total sales and see what happens. Yeah. You talked about placements there when you're low down. Um, is it, placement still as important as it was getting to the top of uh, page one for conversion rate? Obviously, click through rates can be much higher, but does it impact conversion rate in the way that it used to? Every single keyword and every single product is different. So, um, there's no one rule that applies and that's why it's iteration. So uh, mm -hmm. if you have a campaign and you go look at the placement report and it says that your ROAS is a lot more on the top of the search, you can increase the, the bid for top of search, uh, you know, bid by placement and try and show up more there and then look at the results. And if the results end up in that you have more total sales because your click through rate is better at the top of the search and your ROAS is better, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Keep it. Um, but it, 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 like we've seen keywords that do amazing in top of search. We've seen keywords that do bad in the top of the search. Um, so take it on a keyword by keyword basis. And I, I think you can, you can't do keyword. You have to do campaign. So I guess take it on a campaign by campaign basis. Mm. Yeah. Test everything. Um, yeah. you, we talked a little bit about campaign structure. You said five keywords uh, per campaign is what you're kind of working on at the moment. There are some that are big proponents of single keyword campaigns. I tried moving over everything over to single keyword campaigns recently, and it, honestly, it was so much work. I just I went back to uh, a more simplified structure. Um, do, do, is it product launches you would use single keyword campaigns? Just keyword ranking campaigns, um, single keywords. Yeah. Is there any other sort of structure insight you can give? 
No, main, main keyword, main keywords. I would do single keyword campaign, uh, okay. ranking campaigns. Like when I'm trying to rank a, a keyword organically, I would do that. Other than that, it's it's okay. You know, if you have like your your top main revenue, uh, like top uh, top main like um, search uh, volume keywords in single keyword campaigns, I think that's fine. I think the other ones you're okay doing multiple keywords per campaign, mm -hmm. but really. Again, I, I don't have like something definitive. All I know is that when I put too many keywords in a campaign, I know that, that I'm seeing some of those keywords generate a lot of sales and the other ones are not. And so that's, that's my indication that I have too many keywords in that campaign. I need to move them. Um, but, but like, what's the exact science behind it? I have no idea. Yeah. For product launches and keyword ranking campaigns, I don't know if it was just with other stuff you were saying, but you mentioned about exact broad phrase match types. Are you using them all at the same time for keyword ranking campaigns? Yes, I, I use all match types all the time because they will generate different results. And and um, so you can have a, if a keyword does well in an auto campaign, for example, I find a search term like electrolyte powder in the auto campaign does well. I'll launch it for broad phrase and exact, all three, because I have no um, like no no idea which one is going to actually do well. The exact one could mm -hmm. do horrible. The phrase could do amazing. The broad could do okay. And remember that the phrase and the broad are are bundles of keywords. So I could mm -hmm. launch all three. Exact does bad. Phrase there's four keywords that are doing amazing. Five doing bad. Broad ten keywords that are doing amazing. Three doing okay. Five doing bad. If I add negatives to all the bad ones. Now the broad and the phrase are generating really good, you know, sales and the exact is not doing well. You know what I mean? So I just launch in all different ad types and I wait on uh, match types and, and I wait until I get the data. And it's a, a search term by search term basis that I evaluate mm -hmm. each search term. If it's doing well, keep it. If it's not doing well, add it as a negative. And then eventually you end up with a clean, broad keyword that has all keywords doing well and the other, other ones not doing well. And that's all in the same campaign. Um, no, one campaign for broad, one for phrase, one for exact. Okay. Never mix, never mix match no. types. Okay, that, and that's for uh, like just for keyword ranking campaigns, or that's just generally. Generally, this things. is generally keyword ranking campaigns is just so because of search find by we know that your rank improves the more conversions you make on that keyword, um, mm -hmm. and if you have related keywords that are converting, I think it also helps. Um, and so that's why I'm like, it's a single keyword campaign, one for broad, one for phrase, one for exact to give it the maximum amount of budget mm -hmm. to allow it to convert the most amount of times across as many related keywords as possible to increase the organic rank. That's the reason that we're, we're doing the single keyword campaigns and that's the reason that we're separating them. Yeah. No, good. Um, we could talk about this stuff all, all day, but I know you're a busy man. So, um, what, what just rounding up, finishing up, where do you see uh, Amazon PPC going next 12, 24, 36 months? Is the whole page going to be sponsored ads? What, what are we going to see? Yeah, I, th I think um, I don't see them uh, increasing uh, that much more when it comes to um, like uh, ad placements. What I do mm -hmm. think is they are going to make a push for social shopping. This I really have this big theory that they're gonna have some sort of like merge of TikTok and and uh, shopping, Amazon shopping, and then you're gonna yeah. type a you know there's gonna be maybe another tab that that like has videos, short form, and you're gonna go in, you're gonna type in a keyword, and it's gonna show you okay, here's the different products. But in, in video format, like people using them, you can click and, and open up the product detail page. You can swipe to the right and see more people who have posted about this product. And yes. um, that's, that's, I really feel like that's how people consume content and that's how people make decisions. My, my, um, my fiance is five years younger, Gen Z, uh, and, and her sisters and all of those. All of them are making decisions like through TikTok and, and Reels. Mm. And I'm like, how are you guys making decisions like that? <laughs> it's, it's like stupid. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's, that's the generation, Gen Z. They're mm. just like on, on their TikToks and they type in a, a certain, like, they're like a best hairstylist in Los Angeles. And they literally are looking for a hairstylist in Los Angeles. And they're making their decisions based on that. So that's where I see the, the future of, of shopping a little bit. Uh, with PPC specifically, I don't see that many changes besides giving us a little bit more control. I think Amazon wants to put all PPC software essentially out of business. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're giving us more and more and more control. And mm. the only thing that the softwares are going to be good for is if you believe that they actually have like AI and they make decisions and all of this stuff. Mm. 
Um, but if you if you really understand the software uh, or if you really understand Amazon advertising and you just want to have control and be able to do things at scale, uh, like look at Facebook, man. You you don't you don't need a software uh, an, an AI software for Facebook. No Facebook marketer uses AI. So mm -hmm. if you're wondering where is, is Amazon heading, it's heading towards Facebook and Google's level of sophistication inside of the the like uh, you know campaign manager, and uh, there's going to be no no longer a uh, use for software. Uh, you know. Uh, they can you can probably they have budget rules you can probably start creating negative rules and bidding rules and all of these things over time uh so that's what i see coming up in the future and and less and less need for uh software mm -hmm. fasty prediction i like it yeah yeah I, I you know i mean it is what it is but like um that's if you look at the trend they're giving us the targeting tab which allows us to change uh, you know, uh, like all of our, our keywords like this, you know, you can, you can create filters and, and make changes uh, and, and, and so on and so on. So some software are, is going to be great for like the super users. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we still operate in Google Sheets. We still have, you know, we're still looking at patterns and trends and making decisions as a human being uh, yeah. versus like a black and white decision. Mm. Hats off to you, man. Those bulk files are, uh, they're a pain. They can, uh, once you get used to them, I'm sure they're, uh, easy. Yeah, to they're very, very breeze good. Through, but yeah. Good stuff, man. Well, where can people find out more about you, about the agency? Um, if they want to find out more. Yeah. Um, my name is Mina Elias, M I N A space E L I A S LinkedIn. That's where you can message me pretty easily. Instagram at the Mina Elias. You can also, uh, you know, ask me any question there. The website is called triviumco.com. T R I V I U M C O dot com. Uh, if you go there, we do a, f a full audit and consultation. So basically, you can fill out the form, um, and we'll go through every single part of your Amazon advertising campaign, audit it, see what's wrong, how it can be improved, and then tell you exactly what to do to improve it. So you don't even need to hire us; you can do it all yourself. But if you're a CEO and, and uh, you don't want to spend your days doing PPC, that's when you should probably hire us. Very cool. Did you pronounce your name like that just to make me feel better or did I actually get it right at the start of the episode? No, no, no. You, you got it perfect, man. Me not lies. That's it. Yes. Come it was on. good. It was so good. good. Yeah. So good. Awesome. Well, we'll leave all of those links in the, uh, the show notes, the description below. Mina, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate you taking the time out. Been very informative and uh, yeah, excited to see where the agency and everything goes over the coming years. My pleasure, man. Love it. Thank you for having me, Ben. Good stuff. My pleasure. Good stuff. Well, thanks, guys, for listening. Hope you got lots out of that episode. Connect with Mina. Check out Trivium Co. and uh, get them to run your ads. There's no doubt they will do a great job. And we will see you in the next episode real soon.